Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video I'm going to show how to install VMware Player on a Windows machine and set up a Linux virtual machine. So the first thing to do is to install uh, Virtual Machine Player. This is a free program you can download from VMware. So if you go to VMware.com, and then if you select on the Downloads, and I just click on the Downloads, they'll give you the list of all the products that they have, and you can download trial versions for all these other things. We want just a standard player, which is actually free. So if you go all the way down near the bottom, there's VMware Player. If you go to the Download pay, uh, Product, it'll ask you which version. Chances are you want a 64-bit version. Uh, for me, it's auto-detected, and it knows it once I'm on Windows. So if you download this file, you'll get something on your computer that looks a lot like this one here that I've got. Um, I've got version 7.1.0 at the moment. And then when you just double-click it and do the normal install process, assuming you've got install privileges on the machine you're on, you'll get a icon either in your start menu or on your desktop, as I asked it to do, and it'll build you here. So let me just run that. So I'm just going to short-circuit that whole download install process, and imagine we've got this up and running. So now, once we hit this point, we want to uh, create a new virtual machine. So let's go to, I'm going to click here, at the, oops, what do I want to do, on the right-hand side, create new virtual machine. And the next thing I need to do is I need to tell it, well, what do I want to install this from? I could tell it I want to install it from my DVD drive if I had an actual media that I wanted to install off of, like maybe you've got a Windows 98 CD-ROM you want to install from. In our case, we want to put in Linux, and we can get Linux online. So there's a number of different distributions. A distribution is just a sort of a packaging of the Linux kernel, a version of the Linux kernel, with a bunch of user-level applications. A good, safe version or uh, distribution of Linux to use would be Ubuntu, because it's fairly well-supported and commonly used. So that's what I'm going to show how to use here. So if you go to Ubuntu.com, and then we can say, well, I want to go to Downloads, and I'm going to download the desktop version. We're not going to run a server or a cloud or anything like that. And then it says, well, which version do you want? So up here at the top, there is the uh, Ubuntu LTS, which is long-term support, so 14.04.0 at the moment. And this has sort of five-year patches, security fixes, and support. So that's a good choice to get the long-term support. If you want to go bleeding edge at the moment, you can get 15.04 you're not going to notice generally a huge difference by going up to one level step and sticking with the LTS is going to be good because it'll be probably supported for the next few years as you come back to it. Um, also get the 64-bit version assuming you've got a 64-bit machine uh, this allows you um, sort of you know, using larger memory space and so forth so it's just a good idea. So if you click download you'll download an ISO image which I already happen to have already downloaded here and so I've got this is actually 14.04 not .2 but that's fine so I've already downloaded those. Let me just uh, minimize. Oops, let's minimize the browser and get that off the screen. So I've already got the ISO image on my computer, and then I can browse to it and select it. I've already got it typed in here as to where it will find it. And so this just happens to be my ISO image. Uh, the AMD, incidentally, AMD64 refers to the uh, processor architecture. Uh, Intel and AMD architectures are both known as AMD64. Um, so. I'll select Next. Now I can tell Linux when I, this will actually configure the Linux install process. So I'm going to say, well, put in my name as Brian, uh, username Brian, and the password, I'm just going to use Brian as well. And then I can select where I wish to have these all end up. I'll give it a name, and I'm going to put this on my E drive, because i got some space there, and I give it a name. So I might call this uh, Ubuntu 64-bit version, and then maybe give it some other more descriptive name. If it's for a course, put the course name here. Um, maybe put the date. I'm going to put this uh, demo video, just to keep it clear from my other virtual machines. Uh, I can tell it now how much space I want to give it. This is an important question. It says, well, the minimums, uh, the maximum disk size here just wants to go 20 gigabytes. My strong advice is to up this significantly, either to make it 60 or, if you can, make it 80 gigabytes. Um, this way, when you install other programs, you do install a NetBeans or a different version of Eclipse, uh, cross-development tools, whatever you're doing, you've got lots of space there to play with. So definitely make that bigger. That's probably the biggest problem I've seen people run into. And split virtual disk is fine. You could customize the hardware here, although I'll show the hardware customization in a later video. And so then I'm going to say power on once it's done. So I'm going to click finish, and it's going to start installing. 
So what this is doing in a virtual machine is it's actually building a fake computer in my system. So I think of myself as having one computer, but the computer is now able to kind of inside of it run some software that fakes the existence of a second computer. And so now I'm installing a different operating system into this sort of fake, well, this virtual computer. And that's what a virtual machine is all about. And so here we can see that my virtual machine is now booting up. We saw a bit of sort of a virtual BIOS. And we're now running the actual install process. So let me just move this up a little, dragging it up the screen, and we'll be able to see what's going on. So if you just rebooted your machine and uh, started to install Ubuntu on a normal PC, you'd probably see something very similar to this. Of course, this is doing a bit of an automated install because I gave uh, virtual uh, VMware a bit of information as to what to do on that. So you can read these screens. It'll tell you a little about uh, Ubuntu as it goes through. A um, couple things to note. The first thing is it was giving me some pop-up hints. When you click into the virtual machine here in your window, it can capture your mouse and your keyboard. Now at the moment, um, it's fine because I got the mouse. It's roaming around. That's good. If you get your cursor trapped in the window, maybe you're at a text version, maybe the Linux didn't boot correctly, what you can do is hit Control and Alt on your keyboard and it will basically release the keyboard and the mouse, so the focus, from your virtual machine, and so then you can then go and click on some other program. You can see the mouse, you can move it around the screen, you can switch windows and so forth. So if you get trapped in your thing, uh, uh, press Control and Alt together. Um, what else did I want to say? Uh, at some point you may also be asked, do you wish to install the uh, VMware uh, tools or add-ons? And what this does is this allows VMware to tell or work with the new install of Linux that you're just installing and integrate with it. So normally Linux is used to installing on a PC and having complete control of the entire system. And there's no I, no notion of how this sort of kind of external extra system. In my case it's Windows 7. So by installing this extra VMware tools Linux is now going to be able to interact with this host OS. So the host OS in my case is Windows 7. The guest OS is um, Ubuntu 64-bit uh, 14.04. And so things that this will allow me to do will be to do file drag and drop. It will allow me to do copy and paste. And a few other things of integration, like for example when I resize the window that it's in, my actual virtual machine will scale to fill that window. And it won't just kind of and by making everything bigger, it just actually kind of as though I've got a bigger monitor and the whole desktop in um, uh, Linux resizes. So that's quite nice for actual usability. So now it looks like it's almost finished copying, but that's sort of a bit of a lie. It is actually uh, going to take a while to install all these files. Um, so I'm going to stop the video here. Imagine this actually completes, and my next video will pick up where this left off.